Hey, what's up, guys? This is Coach Tex Rimbert, DFW Penguin Basketball. Guys, before we get started, okay, go ahead and comment, like, subscribe. Guys, hitting the like button does nothing but help my channel grow. And if you're watching this, you're viewing this, it only takes half a second for you to hit the like button. Um, you know, I, um, I have a, this month or these past couple of months, I've had a lot of new parents in my program and um, you know I've been watching sports and going to watch certain games not even basketball but um, just noticing during a certain period when I was watching a, a, a tryout I, I was involved in a, in a tryout um, for guys that want to play on select teams and uh, you know guys I'm a, I'm a real uh, people watcher I like to watch people's uh, mannerisms, um, how they carry themselves, how they react to things, because I feel like that is a major part of understanding people and being able, especially with kids, being able to uh, tap into um, talent and stuff and tap into effort that other coaches probably can't get. But in this particular video, in this particular video I want to talk about being a strong and centered dad, what I'm talking about that is just being a father um, or a parent, but mainly we, today we're talking about dads, okay? Being a dad or a coaching, uh, um, a sports parent, a sports dad that's emotionally centered and calm. No matter if it's practice, it's a game, it's a workout, it's a tryout, all of these things, okay? Why is this important? Why is it important for the dad, not just the mom, but the dad to be emotionally centered and calm when it comes to sports? Okay, guys, b believe it or not, as you guys already know, okay, there are a lot of parents, a lot of dads in particular, that um, take their kid playing sports extremely serious, okay? I've seen all different types of things in my 12 years of doing coaching youth sports. I've seen all different types of things from coaches yelling at their own team's coach in the middle of the game, yelling at the referees, yelling at their kid, yelling at the opposing team's kid, getting into, getting into verbal altercations with coaches, getting into verbal altercations with players, verbal altercations with other parents in the stands, physical fist fights, all types of things. Okay, now, I'm going to try my best to keep this really brief um, because it kind of, to me, it's kind of self-explanatory. But I want, and I'm not in particularly talking to my parents, but I'm just saying in general. Because during this tryout, I saw so many dads that were so adamant about their kid getting picked up by a team that, I mean, the kid couldn't even concentrate during the tryout. They had, you know... Uh, I know I've talked about it in videos before from dads and moms coaching from the sidelines. A lot of times all this does is confuse the kid. But when you're not emotionally centered as a parent, especially as a sports parent, your kid will be confused and they won't be centered as well. They will second guess themselves. Anytime they make a mistake, they'll be down on it. Um, if they do something bad or good, they'll look over their shoulder at you or at the coach. And it may takes away their confidence when their dad is emotional when a dad gets upset about little things when a dad gets on them guys I, i'll just tell you this of all of the uh sports coaches that i have okay um not sports coaches but sports dads that i have that play for my team or dads that i have in my program the best dads or just the best parents period or parents that have played at a high level okay why? Because they've seen sports and done it all. They know the process of it. They know how long it takes. They know the kids are going to make mistakes because they've been there and done that. Okay? And I'll be honest with you. All the uh, dads that I have that are high school coaches, middle school coaches, um, they played in college. They played pros. They played at a high level in high school. All of this stuff. Most of those parents never say anything <laughs> at all in the stands. Okay, they sit over there on the sideline and watch, or they would act uninterested in the game 
because they know that what's important is the relationship between the kid, their kid, their teammates, and the coach. Okay, when a when a dad or a mom butts into that and interrupts that, disrupts that, sometimes it makes the kid confused. Okay, but like I said, a lot of times the most centered dads that I have, the most calm dads that I have, are the ones that play sports at a high level. They understand the process. Okay. Um, now there are some dads that kind of have a grudge with sports in their lives because they didn't reach the goals that they, that they wanted to basketball wise and a lot of times those parents in my program or those dads they don't play for me um, because they want instant gratification meaning they want their kid to be on the highest level team um, playing for the highest level person, you know, somebody with a sponsorship, all this stuff. So a lot of times I don't get those types of parents because they avoid me because they know that I'm going to make their kid learn the game and it's going to be a little bit different of an experience rather than being seen and um, getting looks. But like, to go back to what I was saying, you dads out there, some of my dads that may be watching this, you may run across this, okay? Just know that the best thing for you to do as a dad, okay, when your kid is, is playing well, playing bad, having a mediocre game, won the championship, lost the championship, had the best game of all time, is one, give praise when they do well, and stay calm when they're not doing well, okay? This, I don't, I can't, don't want to get too in depth about why this is important, but this plays into your kid's psyche in sports. Okay, if the coach is already getting on this, they know the teammates are upset that they missed a the layup. The coaches are upset, and then they have to hear it from their father, not only during the game but after the game on the ride home and all this stuff. It messes with a kid's psyche and it makes them lose their confidence. But if you're a strong and centered dad, talk to them reasonable, calm when they make mistakes when they come over and talk to you, or you stay away from it, stay invisible during games and practices where they can't come and confide in you every time they make a mistake. Okay? It builds their confidence and it also builds a better bond with them and their teammates and their coach. Alright? So, you know, you guys, last thing, what is calm and centered? I don't know if I went over that. Okay? Calm and centered is just not yelling at the coach, not yelling at their kid, not going crazy, not overly concerned about every little detail of the team. Hey, when it's practice tomorrow, hey, Hey, this. Hey, well, what should he do on this? Well, hey, hey, just relax. Your son is a kid, and it's going to take time. Okay? You're not going to be fully aware as a dad of every little thing that your kid is doing on the team. You're not going to be able to correct every little thing that he does wrong. Okay? It is okay for your son or daughter to make mistakes playing sports. Okay? So if your kid has a bad practice, you don't need to come over and talk to the coach about why he has a bad practice in front of your son, okay? It just messes up your kid's psyche, all right? Now, I'm not saying pacify your kid and tell him that everything is okay, but it's, you cannot go crazy and get off center um, and, and go nuts because your kid had a bad shooting day in practice or the team got blown out by 20 and you felt like your son should have scored those 20 points that we lost by. It's not going to happen. They're going to have up and down games. Most of the time, honestly, guys, most of these kids, if you ask them about a game two seasons ago that they played bad, they won't remember it. Okay? All of this stuff is a learning lesson. The only time you need to really be worried is when they're playing in the playoffs in high school or district games on varsity. Okay? And then in college, you know, it matters a little bit more. But the only games that really matter, in, in, in even in college, are conference games and those conference bracket games and stuff. All right? You, unless it's your last collegiate basketball game, your last high school varsity game, or your last NBA or, or pro league game, okay, you'll have another game to play. You'll live to play another day. And that is all part of the process, whether it's early or late, them making mistakes, being corrected, and then going forward without making that same mistake again, all right? That is pretty much it, guys. I will see you guys later. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you later.